When the Zodiac killings happened in the 60s, everyone was horrified. But they were also certain that he would eventually get caught. Well, it's been 60 years. He's probably dead, and we haven't figured out who he is. Unfortunately, there are more like him today. Today, we have serial killers living among us, who operate from the shadows, take the lives of innocent people, and disappear without a trace. And despite all of our technological advancement, despite all the surveillance equipment dotting the globe, and despite our deep understanding of the human psyche, these killers still walk free. In this video, I will show you the top 10 most active serial killers today. Number 10, The Danilovsky Maniac. Location, Cherepovets, Russia. Between the year 2004 and 2007, seven strikingly similar murders took place on an abandoned construction site on Danilovsky Street. Almost all the murders involved young girls who were molested, then strangled to death. And at the scene of each crime, this lewd drawing was the killer's twisted signature. The police also found matching DNA evidence on all the bodies, which sadly didn't match anyone in their database. Sometime later, when a similar lewd graffiti graffiti appeared on the walls of a nearby school, the police searched, believing that the artist was their killer. But all they got from witnesses was this, this composite sketch of the suspect, whom they now called the Danilovsky Maniac. Suddenly, the killing stopped. An entire year passed without a victim, and by 2009, most believed that he had either died or was imprisoned for another crime. And although authorities still uncovered his identity, the case was closed, and all investigations stopped. Then, in 2010, another victim was found. The Maniac was back, and authorities opened up the case once again. Unfortunately, from 2004 to date, a total of 200 people have been interviewed regarding this case, but not a single arrest has been made. If Mother Nature hasn't taken the killer, then you best believe that the Danilovsky maniac is still very much on the loose. Number 9. Little Rock Stabber. Location? Arkansas, United States. On the 24th of August 2020, the body of 64-year-old Larry McChristian was found stabbed two days after he was reported missing. Then, on September 23rd, 62-year-old Jeff Welch was also found dead, with a stab wound in his neck. No stab-related deaths occurred in Little Rock for a while, until the 11th of April 2021, when 41-year-old Deborah Walker survived a brutal attack with 15 stab wounds on different parts of her body. She described her attacker as a 6-foot-tall adult black male. Then, less than 24 hours later, a 40-year-old homeless man, Marlon Franklin, was found stabbed to death just a block away from where Deborah had been attacked. These events convinced the police that all murders were likely committed by the same person. So, they launched a search for the serial stabber of Little Rock. Unfortunately, all they got was this grainy footage from a CCTV close to one of the crime scenes. The police increased their presence substantially around the city, but unfortunately, it led nowhere. All it did was get the people of Little Rock attention on social media and an interesting masked vigilante called Shadow Vision who swore to hunt down the serial stabber. Number 8. Long Island Serial Killer. Location? New York, United States. Some people call him the Gilgo Beach Killer, others the Craigslist Ripper, but no one really knows who he is. Despite the fact that this serial killer was responsible for the death of 10 to 26 people over a 20-year period, his identity remains shrouded in mystery. In fact, the authorities weren't aware they were looking for a serial killer until 2010, when they began investigating the disappearance of Shannon Gilbert. Their search led them to Gilgo Beach in Long Island, where they found the bodies of the first four victims of the Long Island killer. And in the year that followed, they discovered the remains of six more victims, all within a mile or two of each other, bringing the total victim count to 10 women. In the years since, there have been several leads and the occasional new evidence that has led to the identification of the unknown victims. The most recent of these identifications led to the discovery of a lady called Peaches, who had a peach tattoo on the back of her neck. The lead prompted the police and FBI to widen their investigative nets all the way to Alabama, but unfortunately it led nowhere, and the Long Island serial killer remains at large. Number 7. The Route 29 Stalker. Location? Virginia, United States. Since 1996, there have been several missing persons cases, especially missing young women, along US Route 29. And while some of these disappearings, which eventually led to murder homicides, have been solved and closed, a lot of them still remain a mystery. In 2002, a man was connected to some of the killings on Route 29 after being found guilty of three other murders and two cases of assault in Spotsylvania, Virginia. Detectives, convinced that he was the stalker of Route 29, tried to formally charge him, but in June of 2002, while surrounded by policemen, Richard Ivonitz took his own life. And interestingly, the 
the serial murders did not die with him. A fresh wave swept the region from 2009 to 2014. Five women were discovered dead on that route, including a lady named Alicia Showalter Reynolds. And those who survived spoke of the killer, a man who stood by the road and flagged them down, pretending his truck had problems. But the moment they stopped to help, he would attack them. From witness reports, the police got this composite sketch and a name, Larry Breeden. But after questioning every Larry Breeden they could find in the region, it became clear that the killer was using a whole slew of false names. The stalker of Route 29 still hasn't been found to this day. Number 6. The Rainbow Maniac Location, Paturi Park, Brazil The murders of Paturi Park all took place between 2007 and 2008 in Carapicuíba, Brazil. The perpetrator was dubbed the Rainbow Maniac by Brazilian police because all 13 of his victims were gay. But the truth is, the figure could be as much as 16. All the victims, except one, were shot in the head by the same gun, and the last victim, who remains unidentified, was shot in the head 12 times. Their bodies were also found half-naked in a bush, with their trousers wrapped around their knees. On December 2008, after the statements of local witnesses, police arrested a retired police sergeant named Franco for the murders. A witness claimed to have seen Franco shoot a black gay man 12 times that night. However, after a very long trial, Franco was released in August of 2011 and was declared not guilty by the jury. As it turns out, Brazil is not new to homophobic killings. This case is just one of many other cases, and with the case of the Rainbow Maniac still unsolved, it doesn't seem like these killings will be stopped anytime soon. And although no new deaths have been attributed to the Rainbow Maniac since 2008, one can't be sure that this discriminatory killer isn't still out there killing. Number 5. Sleepy Hollow Murderer Location, Peter Maritzburg, South Africa The Sleepy Hollow Murderer is the nickname given to an unidentified South African rapist and serial killer who was active in the 1990s. He is believed to have been responsible for the deaths of at least 13 women, all of whom he strangled with their underwear. Unsurprisingly, all 13 were sex workers. They tend to be the easiest prey for serial killers. In 2001, the authorities decided to open an investigation into these murders, and they went as far as exhuming the corpses of seven of the murdered women in an attempt to identify them. Unfortunately, the revelation of their identities took the case nowhere, and eventually the case was closed the same year it began. Six years later, in 2007, it was reopened after three more murders were found. The bodies were found close to the crime scenes of the 90s. All three were killed in the exact same way, assaulted and strangled with their underwear. And most alarming of all, all three were sex workers as well. The only difference between both cases was that the 2009 victims were burnt beyond recognition. Sadly, the 2007 investigation failed to yield results. Locals even began to question whether the authorities were taking the killings seriously. Unfortunately for the police, the newer cases are bound to be harder to solve, especially since the killer now burns his victims' bodies to cover his tracks. Number 4. Ibadan Forest of Horror Location, Ibadan, Nigeria In 2014, this dilapidated building in the middle of Soka Forest in Ibadan, Nigeria was used for human trafficking and ritual sacrifice by an unknown person or group of people. Local motorcyclists in the area stumbled on the house by chance and discovered 23 starving victims chained. They also found several body parts and countless more bodies in several stages of decomposition within the building. Eventually, they were able to recover up to 50 human skulls from the building. The police believe it is the work of a group of serial killing kidnappers who are patronized by some rich diabolical politicians or anyone who requires human flesh for rituals. But to be frank, no one really knows. After the incident, there were several claims from the locals that the local police command refused to investigate and find the perpetrators. Some even claimed that they heard screams coming from the building and reported to the police, but nothing was done. Today, the building and other buildings in the area have since been turned into a school, and since no suspect was arrested, convicted, or tried, Soka Forest is still considered a dangerous place to go. Till today, no one knows the true number of victims or the identity of the killers. Number 3. Texas Killing Fields Location? League City, Texas There is an empty field that runs 25 miles across and is located between Galveston and Houston, Texas. For years, no one knew that there were terrible secrets beneath it, until a 13-year-old girl named Colette Wilson went missing in 1971. The police traced her body to a section of the field and found five female bodies, all shot in the head. Through the 70s, at least 11 more female bodies were found, and since then, till this day, over 30 bodies of murder victims, mostly female, have been found under the same fields. At first, they believed that one killer was responsible for all these murders, mostly because all the victims were ladies who were found chained, naked below the waist, and with gunshots to their head. But in 2015, 19 years after he committed his crimes, a man named William Reese led officials to the exact spot where he buried the bodies of three of his victims. It was then that the authorities realized the field served as a collective grave site for the victims of several killers. No other serial killer has been found or come forward to confess, and there haven't been any missing cases that have led them back to the 
fields, but those fields still remain open for any depraved, twisted being to use. Number two, the Manchester Pusher. Location, Manchester, England. It's hard to believe a killer who waits for people to climb bridges, only to push them into the water below, could exist. And that's probably why the police didn't believe it's real. But since 2008, more than 80 bodies have been found in the Bridgewater Canal near the Old Trafford grounds in the UK. The police are convinced that these people were drunk before they fell and drowned. But the locals are convinced this Manchester pusher is responsible for the deaths. In 2018, they felt justified when a cyclist narrated a near-death experience with the pusher. According to him, he was passing the bridge when he was suddenly hit, causing him to fall into the canal. His attacker was a white male of medium height and build, but it was too dark for the cyclist to see his face. And when he tried to climb out, this individual pushed him back. Somehow, he survived. Everyone expected that this would spark an investigation, but the police dismissed the claim, insisting that there was a lack of connection to the other deaths. Until today, no one has truly taken the case seriously. In the meantime, the ones that believe have continued their lives in fear, and the ones that don't believe? Well, for all our sakes, let's just hope that they're right. Number 1. Pedro Lopez. Location? South and Central America. Pedro had a terrible childhood. Born to a sex worker, he and his mother were molested countlessly before he was even 8 years old. Later, he became a criminal and was in jail for car theft by 18. In prison, Pedro was brutally molested by three other inmates, and in retaliation, he killed all three with a shank. Upon his release, Pedro moved to Peru and began targeting little girls and was murdering three per week. He was eventually caught and was almost killed by the locals, but a naive American ambassador set him free. So, Pedro Lopez moved to Ecuador and continued killing. Once again, he was caught, and this time he was handed over to the authorities, who gave him a surprisingly light 16 years in prison. He ended up serving only 14 years for displaying good behavior. But less than 24 hours after his release, Pedro was arrested for illegally trying to cross the border and was sent back to Colombia, his home country. There, Lopez was put on trial for murder, but was declared insane and was sent to a mental hospital instead. By 1998, he was released on the condition that he would pay a $50 bail and report to the police weekly. Instead, Pedro Lopez disappeared. In 2002, a similar murder was linked to Lopez, but until today, the authorities haven't found him again.